On this day of Yom Kippur, the day of judgment, and not because of Aaron judge, it's our day of judgment, when we recite Yisker, I am supposed to be up here begging for money, begging for you to give more than last year, more than ever, just asking you to give something if you've never given, but I would rather tell you why I give so much of my time, and yes, my money, to Woodbury Jewish Center, sometimes to the chagrin of my husband. Eleven years ago, almost to the day, my father suddenly died. I'm told his heart stopped, and that left me with the most broken of hearts. As a doctor, I questioned what happened. What did the echocardiogram show? Why it happened, since his blood pressure and cholesterol were all well controlled, but inevitably, the end result left me shattered. My dad, who loved me unconditionally, the anchor of my family, left me, and I was now fatherless. His passing left my young boys without their beloved grandfather and my mom, a mourning widow. I am telling you this because at that time, I had been a member of Woodbury Jewish Center for 12 years, a member of the administrative board, the co-chair of the ritual committee, and as many of you knew me then as the co-chair of the High Holiday Committee. But I don't think I grasped what the temple meant to me. I was involved for sure, and I knew the shul needed me, but I didn't know how much I needed the shul. But then with the passing of my beloved dad, the temple suddenly embraced me. I walked down from the bima in tears after standing in front of the Torah during Nila, as the rush of emotions surrounding my loss hit me, and I ran into the arms of board members, of friends, who were there for me then and continue to be there for me now, in times of sorrow, in good times, and in all times in between. The synagogue is not just a building, a school, or a place to pray. It is a place of life, of warmth, of family, of love. It is a place that taught my children in nursery school how to make friends, to brush up on the English alphabet, and to start to read. And then with religious school, my children learned to read and write Hebrew. They learned the meaning of the holidays. They learned about the atrocities of the Holocaust. They prepared for their B'nai Mitzvah. And so far, one of my sons, Justin, a synagogue member in his own right, celebrated both his afraf and his wedding here to Lisa Feierstein, a daughter of our founding members, Mark and Sharon Feierstein. Lisa was his Hebrew school sweetheart, by the way. And my second son, Ryan, who recently become, became a WJC member as well, and who just recently got engaged to Hallie Cohen, is also the daughter of our longtime congregants, Donna and Glenn Cohen, and who was also Ryan's Hebrew school sweetheart. By the way, Hallie, happy birthday today. Brandon, my youngest son, will let it slide that your beautiful girlfriend went to Hebrew school at another congregation because we love her too. The feeling I get when I walk through the doors at Shabbat services, at meetings and social events, is like going home. Being around people who genuinely care about me, my family, my life. That's how I feel about each of you. For the first time since I became president of the shul in February of 2020, I finally get to greet you in person and wish you a Shana Tova. I missed two years of hugs and kisses. But now that the world is opening up, and we have tools to protect ourselves and others, we can hopefully put COVID in the rearview mirror. Last night, last week, and today, sitting together in the pews, greeting each other, coming up to the bima, it's wonderful, and it's meaningful, catching up on who got into college, who graduated, who got married, the kids, the grandkids, and unfortunately, who got sick or suffered losses. I got to hear how you really are. That is what WJC is. It's caring about how you really are. And that's why I choose to give my time, my blood, my sweat, and yes, my tears, for sure, and my money to the shul. We have a WJC Cares Committee, led by Brian Rehani and Adrian Roth, that focuses on outreach, helping those less fortunate. It is the charitable, philanthropic arm of the shul, WJC Cares has raised money to purchase warm weather gear for disadvantaged students that was featured on News 12, 
with the help of Marcy Burkell, Rachel Fuhrer, Enid Brighton, Alyssa Dweck, and Ben Dweck. WJC Cares raised money for local nursing homes and for hospitals to feed the first responders during COVID. We raised money to help one of our own young families who lost everything in a fire recently. We are now starting a new committee with a different emphasis, a NIHUM committee, to focus outreach on a more personal, emotional level, to help those in need know that we are there for them, the way WJC embraced me, so that no one feels alone after suffering a loss. Although many of you are surrounded by family and friends, some of you are not. And many of those family and friends don't know how to run a Shiva Minion, and sometimes they leave when Minion starts. And then when Shiva's over, everyone goes back to their lives as if nothing happened. I remember after I completed sitting Shiva for my dad, after taking the walk around the block in the opposite direction from usual, I came home to prepare to go back to work. The world continued, but my life changed. Life does go on. So we are forming this committee to offer support to those who are hurting, but whose life must go on. For emotional support, for questions, for concerns, so you don't feel so alone. Not just for the Shiva period, but for the long term. This committee will check in down the road when you can smile at the memories of your loved ones, or maybe you just can't yet, but will still offer hugs, a smile, and a shoulder to lean on. Just to let you know that Woodbury Jewish Center knows what you're going through and that we're there for you. In addition to the active boys club on Telegram, started a few years ago by Brian Rayani and Dave Sakai, Rory Heller started a Women of the WJC chat. We have 57 ladies actively chatting, and now that we have a critical mass of participants, we are looking to restart an in-person, refreshed version of what used to be our sisterhood and men's clubs. In fact, the WJC gift shop is accumulating beautiful new inventory and will be back in business within the next month. Thank you to Adrian Roth for reviving the shop and to Cheryl Goldman, who has offered her assistance. Any additional volunteers are most definitely welcomed. We are also reinvigorating, reinvigorating our adult education program. Thank you to Rob Dweck, who will work closely with Rabbi to make this happen. Stay tuned for an amazing video tour of the synagogue, thanks to Brian Foreman and Nicole Austacher. We are also looking into having a much larger social media footprint, so if you or your children are into TikTok or Instagram, please reach out to Dave Shapiro or Rory Heller. As our congregation grows, our staff does too, and I am so grateful for the continued assistance of Scott Matthews, who is so helpful in handling our employment law concerns, and to Jen Schaefer with her expertise in human resources. While many committees don't require money to run, much of what the synagogue does absolutely require money. Money on top of what your dues covers. Until I joined the board, I didn't quite realize that dues cover just the bare minimum. It keeps the lights on. And of course, you all feel the air conditioner running. At least I do. I am freezing. <laughs> it keeps the toilets flushing, but it doesn't upgrade those toilets. And no one wants their legacy to be that they upgraded WJC's bathrooms. We have leaks in the caterer's kitchen, and we are responsible for its upkeep. Our building is now over 30 years old. Many years ago, we underwent a major expansion, and several years ago, we remodeled the, bathroom, the ballroom, the sanctuary, and the hallway. This past summer, we refurbished the kiddish rooms with new flooring, walls, and window treatments, thanks to Marcy Burkell and her committee for their hard work. All these renovations, upgrades, and fixes are necessary to keep our building beautiful and our caterer booking parties, and none of them are covered by dues. Our treasurer, Kara Goldstein, heads our finance committee, comprised of Rami Abada, Lisa Fight, Stu Mayer, Dave Shapiro, and Jeff Steinberg, and they make sure we comply with all necessary regulations, that there's oversight, and that we stay within our board-approved budget. Kara and her team work hard to manage the funding necessities we know about and to plan for future needs, but there is never enough money to fund all the programming or to address the requirements of a growing congregation within our aging building. And we need money to provide the outstanding programming that we offer. We must supplement our religious school to fulfill our obligation to teach our children. Tuition is never enough to cover the cost of operating the religious school. 
It never is in any synagogue. Our early childhood program used to have budget surpluses and then had a downturn several years ago. Our director, Cindy Common, brought the program back to financial stability, and it was doing extremely well. But there's a new glitch that I alluded to last night. Universal pre-kindergarten finally came to Syosset, and as a result, we lost our two four-year-old classes to universal pre-kindergarten programs held elsewhere. For those that don't know, UPK, Universal Pre-Kindergarten, is a state-funded pre-kindergarten program run through local school districts and administered by outside partners. There is no tuition for pre-K students in a UPK program as the state reimburses school districts who in turn pay the outside providers. However, the state pays only a fraction of what most preschools, including ours, charge for tuition. Currently, we are in, in discussions with the Syosset School District to become a UPK provider so that we can hold on to our rising four-year-olds and not lose the younger ones to different early childhood programs that offer UPK. We are doing what we can to raise money. We held our first gala since 2020 this past May, and the very well-deserving honorees, Rosemary and Mitchell Clipper, along with the gala committee led by Gina Lubman and Tracy Rayhani, and including Stephanie Abada, Holly Berman, Nicole Crozier, Ilana Goffman, Nicole Austacher, Nicole Polyakoff, Candace Richards, Lisa Sakai, Nicole Shmuelov, Mindy Smolovitz, and Tracy Trevax raised over $70,000 for WJC. Save the date of March 4th, 2023 for the next gala. It's actually honoring me. <laughs> the WJC 18 golf outing, the first golf outing in a generation at WJC, dreamed up by Brian Rayani, who worked with Adrian Roth and their executive committee of Erica Widover, Dave Sakai, Nicole Austacher, Stu Mayer, Brian Foreman, Peter Berman, and Charlie Polyakoff, and their dedicated team of volunteers to carry out Brian's vision. They held a wildly successful golf outing, thanks to many donors and sponsors, and to our title sponsors, in particular, Ken and Erica Widover, and the golf outing raised over $40,000 for WJC. A fabulous time was had by all, and the date for next year is already secured, July 17, 2023. We raise money through Shalakh Manot, through Rosh Hashanah Sweet Wishes gift boxes. We have offered family photo shoots, and we have had fashion shows, but it is never enough. Not only do we need to maintain our aging building, but we also need to support our future. Our future is our children. We saw what happened in Jericho when demographics change and families with non-Jewish children move into a community. We need to continue to attract Jewish families to entice Jewish families to move into our neighborhoods. We do that by being the premier conservative synagogue on the North Shore with amazing schools, amazing programming, amazing clergy, and amazing congregants. We have had many young families join us in the last two years, and we get prospective perspe membership applications weekly. Thank you to Rebecca Obedian, Peter Berman, and Mark Minsky on our membership committee, with assistance of Brian Foreman, Charlie Polyakoff, and Michael Lubman, who are always on the lookout for new members. And by the way, if you are asked to participate in our popular Membership Mondays, please do so. Everyone loves reading your heartfelt stories. Our membership has grown exponentially over the last two years. Help us to continue this trend. Support our programming. Come to services. Show the community that being Jewish matters, that supporting a shul matters, that WJC matters, because we need to be here for you, for your children and your grandchildren, and the grandchildren I don't have yet. <laughs> 33 years ago, Mark Anish said, if we build it, they will come. Well, they are coming, you are coming, and we need that to continue. I beg you to give whatever you can to see our dream continue, the dream of our past presidents, Mark Anish, Ken Whitover, Robin Spielman, Les Laughman, Abe Zelkin, Marty Pollock, Dave Gaffner, Paul Smolovitz, Cindy Maddy, Jeff Fatchler, and Lori Weber, the dream of all who served on our board over the years. Your dream, too. 
we all want our dream, our Woodbury Jewish Center, to flourish, to thrive. We need the Woodbury Jewish Center to be here for decades to come. Please give what you can to secure our future. Gamar Hatima Tova. You should have gotten a pledge card in your little envelope. The way they work is you move the little string to the largest number and you put it there. And then uh, Ben Dweck is coming around. Uh, and we have a few other baskets around if you have it. Of course, you can also contribute after the holiday online. Um, yeah, I'll give it a minute for people to do that if they want, and then we're going to uh, <clears throat> keep going. Do, do, do. 